I am lost in the desert. I see a man always walking a few paces ahead of me. He has the look and bearing of a man haunted by demons. He carries a destiny not bearable to be contemplated. I walk behind him, always a few paces behind, hoping he will lead me somewhere. Some oasis, some shelter, some city, some sign of civilization. Instead, he seems to go deeper and deeper into the desert. He eats very little. He kneels to pray often. The sun is beating down upon him mercilessly. He has no water. I wonder if I should offer him some from my flagon. But he is always looking ahead, unaware of my presence. And I am afraid to disturb him. Something haunts him. One can see that quite clearly. He is struggling with himself, fighting a great battle. Sandstorms swirl around him like a mist, but they do not engulf him. He plunges ahead like a blind man who knows exactly where he is going without having to see. I struggle to keep up with him. He is my only hope. I could never hope to get out of this vast desert without his help. Even though he leads us deeper into the desert, I am convinced he knows the way out. I become his shadow, unflinching like his resolve, unappeasable like his destiny. I wonder how he survives. No food, no water. My own supplies are running out. I begin to get worried. I commence to lose faith. There are no lilies of the field here, nor birds of the air. Man has to toil and to labor to struggle within himself for the fountain that is sure to burst, that we hope will burst, to relieve these endless desert days and nights. I am running out of energy. I can hardly keep up anymore. And still he walks, possessed like a wraith by the things he still has to accomplish. For a long, long time I follow him. I lose track of time. How long is it? Forty days? It is not clear. A long tract of time, soulless, barren, desert. I have become a ghost myself. All my clothes are in tatters. I have run out of supplies and don't know anymore how I survive. My hungry eyes scar the ground for food. My parched throat thirsts for water. I have a murky sense of that other man walking ahead, strong as ever, conflicted as ever. I keep going because of him. If he stops, I know that I am dead, that I am not among the living anymore. As I die lying in the desert, I espy a priest approaching. How did he find his way here? He looks like a grand inquisitor of old, used to burning witches and heretics at the stake. He has come to judge me before my death. He reads me a litany of my faults. He says that I should have stayed put instead of wandering into the desert. He says that I had a good life. I should have appreciated it. He says that I should not have dreamt dreams of freedom, that I should have left that kind of burden to the few good men who are able to bear it. He says that man's spirit is not ready or willing for the freedom to truly choose. Man may only have the illusion of choice. There is just one way to escape suffering, he finally claims to become such a part of the inferno that you no longer recognize it, to take the red pill, to pretend to be free and happy. I look at the priest. His lips are thin, wrinkled and bloodless. His face is blanched like a bone in the sun. His eyes are sunk deep into his face. I register only very slowly his claims that he has freedom because his face tells another story. I understand that I should have stayed put. I comprehend that I should never have come out here. I try to explain to him that I did stay put. I did not choose to come out here. The desert came to me. I was living my life normally, happy with the illusion of choice, not really willing to choose like the rest. But I was overtaken. I try to tell him he's got the wrong man. That the other man, the one he wants, is already out of the desert. That he means to be saying all this to him, the other one, 
to convince him that his quest is wrong and that history has proved him, the priest, right. I try to tell him that he does not realize that we are both now lost and dying in the desert, that there is no longer any choice, that he is not one of the selected few as he thinks he is, but common with the rest of us who stayed put, who tried to enjoy their little lives in the best possible screwed up way among all the screwed up possibilities, but who got screwed nonetheless. I try to tell him all this, but it is no use. No sound comes out of my mouth. My throat produces only unrecognizable croaks. In any case, he cannot hear. He is like a ghost who says the same lines over and over again, without the capacity to listen, to respond, to have a conversation. Night falls on the desert like a pall is laid upon a corpse, and it grows cold. We lie side by side, the priest and I, and look at the stars as they are put out, slowly, one by one, like all the bulbs in a house are extinguished, and a total darkness consumes us both, the inquisitor and the inquisitioned, two naked bodies prostrate in a vast and cold desert.